Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Sam. Uh, I've had a few queries recently from various places um, about running DaVinci Resolve, the Dolby Atmos renderer kind of built into it, and especially the Jack Audio connection kit um, in terms of taking the DaVinci Resolve outputs and kind of binauralizing them so that you can monitor what you're doing on headphones. Um, if you're aware of uh, the Dolby Atmos kind of part of Fairlight within DaVinci Resolve, you'll be aware that there's only stereo monitoring or, you know, proper speaker, Dolby Atmos array speaker playback um, possible. You can't monitor binaurally. Um, to monitor binaurally, you would need to connect DaVinci Resolve or whatever door you, you want to use um, to the Dolby Atmos um, production or, or mastering suite. Um, if you're a Windows Studio like myself, um, primarily Windows user, um, the production suite is only Mac um, compatible. You cannot install it on Windows. Um, but that is the cheapest way to purchase the essentially the license to the renderer. Um, you can purchase the mastering suite, which is, I think, I think it must be over two thousand um, pounds, and that provides you with a kind of like a Dell wrap mount server and uh, the mastering suite pre-configured. So, really, if you're just looking into Dolby Atmos out of curiosity, you're not going to go that route either. Um, but one option is um, is to choose either DaVinci. A resolve from Blackmagic or um, Nuendo um, from Steinberg. Um, I could have gone with Nuendo. <clears throat> the only reason I didn't was I think you needed a, a USB dongle. Um, Blackmagic was um, available to uh, to download without one, um, and I had a an old version sixteen license, so. Um, the DaVinci Resolve licenses are um, perpetual, so you can just keep it updated to the latest version. You don't need to keep buying new versions. Um, so basically, when you've installed um, DaVinci Resolve, the, everything I'm going to say is pretty much the same for Nuendo 2. They're, they're both limited in terms of, I don't think you can want, you can't monitor binaurally in Nuendo either. Um, so once you've installed uh, DaVinci Resolve, um, you'll by default you'll just be connecting to a um, a two dot zero output probably kind of your your headphone output or just your studio monitor output um, and so even though you can mix in multi channel you know seven dot one dot four mode um, uh, format you, you're only going to hear the folded down stereo version um, which is really not that much different from just mixing in stereo uh, so one one option you've got um, is you can on your on your um, 7.1.4 Dolby bus you could kind of everything that's going to that bus you could duplicate it and take it to another bus so you could if we went up to the bus format so there's my Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 bus. You could add a just a duplicate um, 7.1.4 bus, oh, um, and each track that you're adding while routing it to the Dolby Atmos bus, you can route it to your monitoring bus as well. And once you've got your monitoring bus, um, you can you could apply um, if we. Our DVR Pro will be fine for this demonstration. You could you could apply your your binauralizer. So here we've got an output format binaural, and it will be taking the 7.1.4 in. You could do that. The problem is the the panning data of each track. So by panning data, I mean if you looked at the three dimensional panning data, the, Divin, uh, the um, Dolby Atmos panning data. That is only affecting the the channel, the 7.1.4 channels post renderer. 
So it's the renderer that's taken this data from the panning and affecting how much of the audio is going to whatever speaker in, you know, whatever um, whatever speaker you panned it to. Basic left, right, center panning um, will get born binauralized, front and back will get binauralized, but things like rotation, tilt, spread, and size the that is all processed by the Dolby Atmos renderer. That's why you've got a Dolby Atmos renderer. You're not simply just panning a, a channel-based mix. It's it's an object basically. Um, so it needs to know exactly where what ratio is of audio is going into what speaker at what point and at what time. So you you can we could run we could run the binauralizer on that bus and we'll kind of get a a kind of a loose binauralized version, but you'll be missing the height information quite a lot. The positioning won't really be accurate. Um, so you need to look at a different solution. Um, one one way to do that is something called Jack Audio. I'm just going to delete this bus because we're going to come back to DaVinci Resolve in a minute. Um, one way to go about it is to install Jack Jack Audio. Um, you can you can look on the web to download it. Just type in Jack Audio and you'll you'll find the download. And what Jack Audio is is a it's kind of like a virtual ASIO kind of device which allows you to create as many I/O channels as you want off of your um, off of your main audio interface. Um, obviously. Chances are, if you're just on a laptop or um, on a headphone output, you've just got a stereo um, output. In my case, if I look in the parameters here, I'm connecting to uh, my Apogee headphone DAC at the moment, just to do this video. Um, and that's definitely only two, two channels, um, stereo. <clears throat> um, but we can kind of, Jack Audio will kind of use that as the, the main output. And then everything before that will be jack audio and uh, as many channels as you like. Um, so once you've once you started that, uh, I think by default you get four channels probably off of the sort of the main stereo out. Um, but if you open up um, Jack Router Inny, which is in uh, that the path shown there, um, you can increase how many input and output channels you want. Jack Router to create. Um, I've set mine to 32 because DaVinci Resolve um, allows 32 channels of I/O, um, so it kind of makes sense to, to set it to that. Um, ideally, you'd probably want that at 128 because then you could actually take 128 channels of audio into DaVinci Resolve, and 128 channels uh, is the uh, total uh, object count of an Atmos mix. But anyway, that's that's another subject, and maybe one day DaVinci will will increase that that channel limit. But to be honest, for a lot of music, thirty two channels gets you quite quite far, especially if all you're doing is experimenting and, and having a look having a look at um, uh, mixing in Dolby Atmos. Um, so once your server started, Jack Audio server, um, uh, you'll you'll get a you get a status of whether it has started or not. Sometimes it doesn't, and that's because the, the configuration setup needs to be adjusted or whatever. Um, it will tell you what, what mode you're in. At the moment, we're in a real-time server mode, and we've currently got a DSP load um, of, from those 32 IO channels of 6.2% on, on the CPU, um, which is pretty lean, really, um, for what it's doing, 32 channels of internal audio only using 6% of your CPU is pretty good, really. Um, and what effectively is happening is um, Jack Audio is allowing whatever application, ASIO application, running something called the Jack Router driver, um, it's allowing you to patch those together. So uh, the, the most obvious place to view that is in the graph of, um, of Jack Audio. Um, and here you can see there's a DaVinci Resolve running with the 32 channels from the configuration. 
I've also got um, this plugin running, which is Yenosphere, which is what we're going to demonstrate monoralizing with. Um, that's also been given 32 channels. Um, you can actually see OBS here as well because um, it's picked up that OBS is running, but I'm, I'm running the microphone directly into OBS. I'm not running it through, um, through Jack. Um, and here you can see we've got 12 channels outputting from DaVinci Resolve into the Bonoralizer, into Sienna Sphere. Um, and essentially all that is, is in DaVinci Resolve preferences, um, you select your ASIO output to be Jack Router, which is the, the, the virtual driver, and uh, monitoring setup for the studio is 7.1.4 but we're going to route that to Jack rather than to our speakers. Um, and that is exactly what you see has happened there. Those 12 connections, those 12 speaker channels are actually going to Sienna Sphere. <clears throat> um, this loop back here is so that I can actually record what's going on in a minute. Um, and then just so I can monitor it out of my headphones, system here is basically my Apogee headphone um, headphone DAC. So with that said, if we come back to DaVinci Resolve, um, I've set up on audio channel one, I've just set up um, it to take um, some noise. There's a noise generator in DaVinci Resolve. It's just an easy way to, to test a channel. Um, so I'm just patching some noise to um, audio uh, one's inputs um, and if I monitor that by clicking record actually I need to record this as well um, so this is just recording the, the, the loop back and um, if I monitor the audio one you should should hear some white noise okay so that white noise I'll leave, I'll leave it running but just turn it down that white noise is exiting this 7.1.4 speaker output monitor. It's coming into Sphere and it's coming out of Sphere onto my playback and looping back to be recorded, which is what you're, you're hearing now. Um, at the moment, I've just got this set as a stereo input. But we can change that and we'll say we want to monitor all 7.1.4 channels and we'll say we want to monitor it in a Dolby Atmos uh, mid binaural setting. And so there's my mid binaural setting. I'll just turn it up a bit. So what you've got now, you've got, you've got our left and right audio channel, uh, the white noise. And that's represented by left and right here and by the meter here. It's pretty boring because it's just a stereo signal. So um, uh, we're not hearing anything binauralized. It's just, it's just a stereo version. But if we, actually, if I just pin this so we can keep this up. If I, if I go into the panner for uh, this white noise, I can now start panning left and right, front and back, up and down. Um, to create essentially uh, the position of, of, of that object. I'm gonna just take it down to mono because it's a lot easier to hear what's going on in a mono format. But if I just, if I just pan this to the right, We'll come back a bit and we'll come up. On this bus one meter here, you can see we've now got audio in more than just the left and right sort of stereo channel. We're we're bleeding into the whole kind of the whole room now. And Sienna Sphere is representing that by lighting up what channels have got audio coming through them. Um, if we take the size right up, we're now bleeding into pretty much every single speaker other than the NFE channel because an object cannot, um, cannot feed the LFE channel. It's not, it's not how Atmos is designed. 
if you wanted to feed this into the um, if you wanted to feed this into the LFE channel, you'd have to route it out through an aux um, into the bed. Um, but that's a completely different subject. Um, which, uh, you can find out all about beds and objects um, on the Dolby website. Um, and so that is basically the setup. Um, the I guess the only downside is I'm just going to turn this turn this down. The only downside, obviously, is the Cyanosphere plugin is a global, it's a global binaural setting. So we are just hearing 7.1.4 to Dolby Atmos mid binaural um, sort of experience. Uh, we could choose far, we could choose near. You can turn it off if you want. Um, whereas in reality. Um, in um, DaVinci, you might um, be applying different binaural modes to different tracks. So we might say we wanted this to be far. In DaVinci Resolve, there is no mid, near, far, off. It's all off, basically. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so you you won't monitor those changes, but for a lot of cases, you'd probably just have everything on mid and then maybe the bed channel might, might be off or something. Um, but that, that is the limitation. But for just getting into Dolby Atmos, um, you can you can create the whole master file and publish it if you wanted to. You'd really want to monitor it on speakers as well, but um, this would get you started anyway. Um, so yeah, that's basically the setup. Um, uh, what I'll do, I'll do a second uh, video uh, where we take it one step further and uh, my, my door of preference is actually Bitwig and so we could take the the outputs of Bitwig um, <clears throat> so we'll add an extra step here we'll have um, we'll have Bitwig here and we'll take 32 channels out of Bitwig we'll, we'll take a whole mixed track push them through to resolve and then we'll push that out to Sienna to, to monitor binaurally um, and I'll show you how to do that on a, on a second video anyway hope that uh, helps explain uh, things the jack audio connection kit is not the most stable thing in the world especially with DaVinci Resolve uh, it, it's going to take you a little bit to, to get your head around that um, oh, but hopefully you can uh, get an idea for for, for getting started from this video and I'll um, I'll work on uh, on the next one okay cheers then bye